Hi, this is Art Gallagher from More Mammoth Musings, and we're here at McLoon's Rum Runner in Seabright at the Super Bowl party uh, hosting, hosted by Sheriff Kim Guadano. I'm here with former mayor of Bogota, Steve Lonigan, who's a uh, candidate for the Republican gubernatorial nomination for governor uh, this year, in, running for governor in 2009. Steve, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Welcome to Monmouth County. It was good to be here. Yeah. Um, so the race is going pretty well so far. You've raised a lot of money. Yeah, we've had a, an awful lot of people in New Jersey willing to invest in my campaign. We're at about 4,000 donors right now, which is really encouraging. And they range anywhere from $5 to the $3,400 maximum. And I'm, I'm continuing to raise money every day. Uh, on top of that, we have a terrific grassroots organization statewide with organizers in every county, almost every town. Um, so this is going to be all about message. Right? It's all about a vision for the future of Jersey. Good. So talk more about that message and that future. You've been in the trenches as a, as a mayor and a, as a, an activist with Americans for Prosperity since you've been mayor. Um, what, do we, what do we need to do? What do you wanna, how are you going to fix New Jersey? Well, I've been in the trenches both as a business owner starting in 1980 right into this decade in manufacturing and retail. So I know what it is to run a business in the state. I know what it is to run one of the state's many terrific small towns for 12 years. Um, and it, with my experience, my background, uh, I've captured a, a, a really solid knowledge of the failed state policies that have damaged the state and what it's going to do to turn New Jersey around. We can turn New Jersey from what is now the worst state in the country for business to the best state in the country for business. And we can do it quickly. It's not going to take 20 years. We'll do it within a few years of my being in office. And we'll do that by cutting taxes, cutting the size of government, getting government off the backs of the private sector so that people like you and I and everyone else can go out and achieve their best possible potential. Right now, the number one barrier to that achievement is government policies in New Jersey. You talked about a small town, and um, uh, I live in a small town, and uh, there's, well, there's been a lot of talk about shared services and consolidating towns. We're here in Seabright, which is um, a one mile long town with 2,000 people living in it. Uh, they send their kids to uh, their high school students to uh, Shore Regional High School. It costs them eighty-one thousand dollars a year per child um, to to do that. Right across the river where I live in Highlands is one square mile with 5,000 people. Right next door to that is Atlantic Highlands, with, which is 1.2 square miles with 4,000 people. So in about three, three square miles, we got 12,000 people. Uh, does it make sense to have small towns like that? Or, you know, the, um, the governor has been talking about consolidation and some Republicans have been talking about mergers and consolidations of towns. What makes sense? I, New Jersey, one of New Jersey's greatest treasures is all of these terrific small towns where local elected officials are, are elected by the people to govern their neighborhoods. Uh, and they are the most efficient level of government in the state of New Jersey. I would stack up Atlantic Highlands and Mayor Fred Rast's record on managing that town. That's Governor Corzine's any day. These small towns uh, do a far better job of delivering services than every big city. If the people in Trenton had their way, they'd be merging all these towns and we'd have Newark on the shore, Newark North, Newark Jersey, and Newark South. Uh, they would become inefficient and unproductive. Our small towns are safe, they're affordable, and they're democracy. And one of Corzine's biggest complaints is we have too many small towns. He's saying we have too much democracy. I say that we have too much bureaucracy and trend, and that's what it should be happening. The bureaucracy and trend, not the successful records of Mayor Fred Rast, Mayor Michael Halfaker, Mayor Anna Little, and the work that they do for their communities. That's something we need to defend, we need to defend home rule, and we need to defend our neighborhoods against the trend of bureaucracy. Do we draw the line anywhere? Because, you know, when I, when I look at the, the three towns I mentioned, it's like 12,000 people, and we got three sets of professionals, three for administrators, uh, three school systems. Uh, where if we merge into Middletown, we'd increase the size of middle, the, the land mass of Middletown by 10%, the population by 17%. Uh, where do you draw the line? Because using your logic, I could say, well, you know what? I, let's have more democracy. I want to have my block be attacked. Guys, can you speak up a little bit? I, I want to have my block be attacked. Is, is there room for a middle ground? Well, you know what? Yeah. You know what, Art? If the people on that block decide they want to be a town, then let them do it. 
Well, they can make that decision. It's up to them. It's not up to the Trenton bureaucrats, and it's not up to me. If the little towns down the shore get their heads together and they decide they want to merge because it's better for them, they can make that decision. We don't need Trenton forcing us to do it. We don't need these failed bureaucrats forcing us to do it. If, if these mayors get together and say, look, we can save a ton of money and cut taxes, then let them do it. We don't need to force them into this. And by the way, you will find that every one of these towns is very inexpensive to operate. And in almost every single case, if you force these towns to merge, you actually drive up property taxes for most residents. The science proves that. We need to get away from the sound bites of politicians who are saying, you know, get away from all these little towns. Listen, well, I'll give you a terrific line. I think it's a terrific line. Under this logic, McDonald's should own every one of its franchises. Yet the McDonald's Corporation, the most successful food service business in the world, has determined that having individual owners for every franchise, individual owners making their own profit, is more successful, more effective than then only owning those businesses. If a company like McDonald's can manage their small stores, what makes us think Trent can manage our small towns? Can we uh, pause it for a little bit?